Okay. Hello, All-Star clients, and welcome to another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable, presented by All-Star Veterinary Clinic. Clever. The podcast where we answer your veterinary-related questions while we also have some fun along the way. No one was forced to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Totally not. No. Okay. On today's episode, we have myself, co-host and associate veterinarian, Dr. Ashlyn Duckwall, head of room assistants, Nicole Havens, woo! Woo! Room assistant Denise Luttrell. Did I say that right? Sure. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't. Everybody says it different. It doesn't matter. How do you say it? Luttrell. Luttrell. Denise Luttrell. Oh, you're both Sarah. Denise <laughs> Luttrell. That's right. Sure. No. Oh. Imposter. Okay. And, and her co-host, plus administrative, administrative support specialist, say that. Sam. <laughs> Sir Sam. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just self conscious about how to say people's names. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's the Vocera voice. I get it. Yeah. Yep. Denise. You think Petrol. of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to go <laughs> off the Wait script man. now. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> you want to give us the, give the shout out? That's in. Oh, yes. yeah. Let's talk about all the, um, we've had an explosion on TikTok. So thank you for our recognition. Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool exciting. video. No yeah. snaps for TikTok. <laughs> does anyone here have a TikTok? No. Sam does. Nice. <laughs> One extra follower. <laughs> you started it all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't do the yeah. tickety talk. No. No. Yeah. I watch it. Yeah. That's about it. Well, on Instagram too, TikToks are just yeah. basically on Instagram now. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're just old right? ones, I, th- yeah. I think. Yeah. I got so locked I'm out. Getting, like, Instagram. Instagram. You got locked out? What happened? Somebody changed my login <gasps> information. Rude. <laughs> oh, my bad. gosh. That is so rude. <laughs> you got to report that. I tried. And they didn't believe Seven you? times. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. It was like, here's my recovery email. And then it was like, we couldn't prove, like, I had to take a picture of my face. Yeah. And like, all this stupid stuff. I did it like four times. Yeah. And it was just like, sorry, we couldn't prove that. I was like, you can't tell that this is my face on my Instagram. That actually happened to Charles, too. He tried to prove it and they said, nope. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. It's very weird. I was like, whatever. I got locked out. I have my Jack's Instagram account, too, that was linked to my Instagram account. Couldn't get my Jack's account either. It's, oh maybe it's gosh. the universe's way of saying you don't need social media. Yes. I haven't yeah. really went, been worried about it since. So. <laughs> That's good. Get rid of one addiction. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Go on to the next one yeah. called TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So apparently it's been blown up. We've been blown up. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. What's it called? What's our username? All-Star Veterinary <laughs> Clinic. Okay. Again, <laughs> original. Original. Got it. Okay. All right, do you want to start us off with your would you rather question, our would you rather question? Oh, sure. The first would you rather is would you rather be forced to sing along or dance along to every song you hear? You just got to pick them pick so they have to just I'd rather it. sing along. <laughs> I'm really bad at singing, but I sing to every song regardless. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. Denise? I would sing. Same? I don't yeah. have the energy to dance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it just sounds it's like fair. a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Do you have to dance to the entirety of the song, you think? Oh, I would assume. I would Probably. assume. That'd I think that's lot. fair. That's yeah. a lot of dancing. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's a really long song. Yeah. Yeah, what's a, I feel like a Styx song is really or a long. a meatloaf song? Yes. Or it's like seven what minutes. is it? Is it Paradise City? Is that like the longest? I don't know. Guns N' Roses is, I think mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, that's We're going to have to look that up. What's the longest song ever? Can you fact check us? Yeah. Yeah. He's our fact checker. Is he or <laughs> he's not even paying attention. He's, he's not even paying yeah. attention. Well, well, we may never know. Well, we'll come back to that okay. one. Freebird? No. No. It could, there's Google, it. <laughs> Google it. Google it. Okay, well, to be I determined. Alternate. I would definitely sing along for sure. I just imagine like. I've gone to a couple concerts that where you don't know many of the songs. Yeah. yeah. It's just not as it's not as fun. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah, Sam, what about you? Good. Um, if I ideally I'd love to alternate, but if I had to pick one, I would dance. Okay. Dance. Wow. Oh, nice. Okay. Do you have a reason? No. Okay. Any like go to dance moves? Just like to dance. <laughs> you don't want to see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, but we do. <laughs> 
Okay, maybe another time because this is a <laughs> podcast that I think most people listen to, but I honestly don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, because I don't fine. think you have a Facebook either, do you? No, <laughs> <laughs> definitely no Facebook. <laughs> okay. That's okay. The longest song is oh. The Rise and Fall of Bossa Nova by PC the Third, which lasts 13 hours, 23 minutes, <gasps> and 32 Stop. seconds. Stop. There's no words for 13 hours. It's probably instrumental. Play it. Start it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. Well, yeah. <laughs> the longest recorded pop song is Apparente Liberta by Giancar Giancarlo Ferrari, which is 76 minutes, 44 seconds long. That's wow. terrible. That's, that's terrible. That's too long. <laughs> that's just Who terrible. wants to listen to the same song yeah. for that long? No. no. That's no. like a whole playlist. I know. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Thank you. It's a Spotify list. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. I'm not repeating those names for all those who probably didn't hear yeah. because I don't know how to say those names. No. So. Yeah, no. Okay. He'll probably pop it up or something. Okay. <laughs> Okay, number two. Would you rather get a paper cut every time you turn a page or bite your tongue every time you eat? Paper cut. Yes. Ooh, that, but those can really hurt sometimes. You can mm -hmm. put band-aids on your fingers, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. You bite your tongue constantly. It hurts it for hurts. days. And then you keep biting it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. you just keep swollen. biting it. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe paper cut, but like those just like slice. You're just like, mm. I don't know. But you're, have you ever bit your tongue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts like the dickens just right after you get it. Yeah. Oh. Have you ever gotten a cardboard cut before? A cardboard cut? I don't know. Yes. Is it like a, that is the worst. <laughs> that's like five times worse than a paper cut. Would you cut? rather oh. get a cardboard oh. cut or bite your tongue every time? Cardboard cut. Oh, wow. Still <laughs> sticking with it. I like you can cover up yeah. all your yeah. <laughs> Wear yeah. gloves, David. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I agree. I would cardboard or paper cut. Wow. Mm -hmm. My joke was going to be that I don't read, so I wouldn't have to worry about getting paper mm. cuts. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Be careful with that yeah. paper. <laughs> it's a weapon. Valid. <laughs> Valid. Okay, Step I think off. we're all unanimous there. Your oh, paper cut? yes, paper cut, 100%. <laughs> mm. yes. Oh, yeah. Um, would you rather have to wear your shirt uh, inside out or wear your pants backwards? Shirt inside out. Mm -hmm. That has to be uncomfortable. Wearing, wearing your pants, pants backwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of work. I don't know. I've accidentally done it multiple times <laughs> with those bigger sweatpants that, you know, oh, not yeah. yoga okay. pants, yeah. not yeah. form fitting. That. But like if you're uh, don't to even know halfway jeans through. backwards. Yeah. That's right. what I was. That was like, oh. Yeah. Well, I thought it was jeans. I'm like, mm. yeah. yeah. Oh, I was Might thinking kind of the big baggy yeah, sweatpants. <laughs> <for the year. laughs> yeah. That was my first Been there. thought. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I would say. If they're sweatpants. <laughs> you have to specify. Yes. yes. If it's like a V-neck t-shirt, I don't want to wear it. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They, mm. I mean, there's some weird styles out there. That could be a thing. I think yeah. t-shirt is safer to say. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Board. okay. Number four. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> I was excited when I read this. Okay. Would you rather kiss Chris Pratt, Chris Pine, Chris Evans or Chris Hemsworth? I'm not going to lie, guys. I had to Google these people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, I know who Chris Pratt is. Okay. And I know I've seen Chris Hemsworth. The other – I had to Google them. That's okay. No shame in that. No, I still Did you that. like what you saw? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Oh, okay. I'm old. So who would you yeah, pick? Uh, Chris Pratt. Okay. I went with Chris Pratt, too. Yeah. Are you talking like Parks and Rec, Chris Pratt? Or are you talking like Jurassic Park? Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely different versions. But even of Chris Pratt. Jurassic Park, <laughs> I feel like the other guys are like too like pretty. Yeah, yeah. he seems more like sweet, down to earth, kinda like hanging yeah. out, kinda funny. like a real person. Yeah. Yeah. Not saying that those aren't real people. <laughs> <laughs> They're fake. <laughs> They're fake people. <laughs> They're robots. <laughs> Sam? Chris Hemsworth. Mm. 110%. <laughs> I read that, yeah. saw his name, I was like, no question. Yep, yep, same. That's yeah. exactly how I felt. Yep. Okay. So we got 50 50. Sorry to Chris Pine and Chris Evans. <laughs> I don't know who Chris Pine is. Um, uh, he's been in stuff. I, I can't. What would he? What's the like movie? common things? Chris Pine. Star, Star Trek. Trek. Oh. Yep. Nope. Oh. Yeah. They uh, all have good angles at great lighting, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. I wouldn't be mad for any of them. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of scared me. His features oh. were a little... Who? Chris, 
Chris Pine or Chris Evans? Chris Pine. Chris Pine. I think. Chris Pine and Chris Evans kind of look the same. Chris Evans is America, Captain America, right? Yeah. Oh. I haven't. It's still not as worth for me. Yeah. Sorry, all the other Chris's. (laughs) Okay. Last one is, would you rather have super sensitive taste buds or super sensitive hearing? Hearing. Because you can put in like ear. What are they called? Plugs? Hearing aids? Earplugs. <laughs> hearing aids? Oh. You don't need hearing aids if you have super, you have super, super ultrasonic hearing. <laughs> I just was not kind of paying attention, honestly, at first. <laughs> goggles. 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 Ear goggles. <laughs> Ear muffs. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, but you can't substitute like you're eating, you know? True. Yeah. I couldn't I don't decide, know, but, but wouldn't I, it? I like that. I think I agree with you. Yeah, I, I feel know. like silence can be... Like deathly scary. Yeah. Maybe not deathly. <laughs> it's really morbid. Silence can be scary. <laughs> yeah, but when you're still you going to hear. Your taste buds are so Wait, what? sensitive. Oh, so we're not losing it. <laughs> no. Oh. No. Would you rather have it? Oh, sensitive well, in that hearing. case, I want good taste buds <laughs> because I yeah. didn't have any good. when COVID hit. And oh. I got it yeah. back when it all first Joy hit. Joy leaves your life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was weird. Yeah. I remember, like, my mom brought me something, and it was like, Ooh. this is, <laughs> like, I think she brought me, like, chicken broth or something, just for the protein purposes. And I was like, this is just water. Yeah. I can't taste anything. It yeah. was so weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I would go with taste, too. Yeah. You Especially, miss. like, when you travel, like, it would enhance your experience. cultural experience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got to eat. You don't have to always exactly. hear everything. True. People go Depending. without hearing. That's they right. Do. We had a deaf family in yesterday and today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. That was fun. Good questions. Okay. Case collections. Hope everyone has a case ready. If not, yeah. it's okay. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is uh, the time where we just share interesting cases, um, what's happened, good or bad, so we can all learn from them. Um, who would like to go first? Don't jump all at All once. right. Okay, Denise Luttrell. <laughs> Luttrell. <laughs> Denise Luttrell. I have to say it like that. <laughs> now I have to change my post. <laughs> no, it helps. It sounds yeah. so... I don't know. We anyway. all got weird with Sarah's yeah. names. And Sam changed hers one time and it weirded me out. Because oh, it used to be the same to... and then yeah. she speeded it up. Yeah. Well, because I... Like, everybody just always says Sam. So I was like, I'll just change it for me when I say it to Sam. And I sped it up. So it does sound a lot different. So what did you do? Sam? Sam? Sam Sercio. Sam Sercio. Sam Sercio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Well, Nikki says I sound angry now When I since I changed it. She's oh. like, you sound angry. It kind of scares me when, I, <laughs> when you call me. So. Oh, we should do a video or a TikTok of us doing our or people's Ooh, uh, making, Bocera voices. Ooh, that's Emily a really good idea. King. You've reached Emily King. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave a message, and I'll get, and I'll right, get back right back to you. To you. <laughs> Lynn says her so fast. I don't think I've heard Lynn's yet. I don't think mm-hmm. I have either. All I hear is all little. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Well, she says, little, I don't little. think you really like comprehend what you're recording, so we record yeah. them on the first day of mm-hmm. your job. Uh, oh, so yeah. They're just like, say your name. So they're like, um. <laughs> yeah, Courtney's has a question mark. Courtney Vaughn? <laughs> <laughs> Abby's yeah. did, but she changed it. Yeah. Did she? Yeah. It was Abby, Abby Depew. Depew? <laughs> yeah. 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 She's changed hers favorite. like 17 times. Yeah. Um, she got mad at me because you can tell it to. So instead of saying like Dr. Duckwell, I could tell, I could teach her that when I say call Ducky, it would still call you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've called Josie, Josie Pop for a long time and I had to reteach her how to to do Josie Pop and Abby was like stop saying that <laughs> I'm like I have to you have to repeat it three times in order for it to Josie stick Pop, yep. Josie Pop Josie Pop <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome I love it okay um, so it's just the other day when yeah. did we decide it oh, was like a week t- ago yeah okay. a week, week ago today oh my gosh oh my gosh um, so we had a cat 14 14- year old cat i think that came in and it was unable to walk unable to stand really it had been vomiting um and this cat had been blind since earlier this year 
Mm-hmm. Um, and they were concerned. They thought she had maybe a stroke or mm-hmm. something. Um, and she came in and she was just circling. She couldn't stand really. Um, and she had nystagmus really bad mm-hmm. and just, um, and so Dr. King gave her a shot of Serenia. Um, for nausea Mm -hmm. or the vomiting um, and then said you know call and check on her the next day see how she's doing and she was fine so it was just one of those yeah what is it idiopathic vestibular disease vestibular disease yep Yep. yeah and yeah we i mean i even thought she doesn't look real Mm -hmm. you know real good and she wasn't feeling very good and they were like no this is not like her and especially with all that history of being blind being older Mm -hmm. all that stuff and yeah. yeah, vestibular disease is one of those where it'll hit quick. So a lot of times people get worried there was a stroke involved. But then there are certain characteristics where you look for and they should, dog or cat should get better, improve after some time. So, mm-hmm. and if not, then you worry about. Yeah, stuff, and it all so. started early that morning. Yeah. So it was just, Jeez. yeah, hmm. so they were really worried. And I mean, I don't blame them there. Yeah, they literally feel like the, and... like the animal feels like they're on a boat. Yeah. yeah. Like they're yeah. just constantly... It's so, it's so interesting yeah, yeah. and so how it can be for out of nowhere too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's Cindy a, said Kelly's had it twice, like yeah. almost back to it's back so, too. Yeah. So strange. Yeah. It's a good one in the sense you're like, okay, this, like it does get better. Sometimes mm-hmm. they have a head tilt or something, yeah. but at least it's, you know, in that scenario, it's, you're cautious because you're like, it could be not so good. But right. when you see the signs, it's a good happy ending usually. Yeah. Yeah, she said, nope, she's back to her old tricks, I think is what she said. So, oh, okay. yeah, and that was the next morning. So, I'm, I was hmm. happy. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That is good. That's rewarding, too, yes. when you see that. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of worried to call him, but. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. That's my case. It's a good case. Not my case. case. It's a case, but, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> That's yours, too. You helped. Yeah. I remember. Okay, Sam. Um, our, mine is our friend Annie that we saw last week. Oh, yeah. Um, she went to the dog sitter, but it was the first time that she had gone by herself. She was hiding at the pet sitter. She was hiding on walks, like trying to like hide in the bushes on the, on walks. She wasn't eating. She was vomiting, like totally not acting like herself. Came home, was still doing the same thing. And we did some in-house labs. Um, I think we, we did the dewormer and Remedil and do we, do we do a Serenia injection too? We did. Yep. Um, I texted her that morning and she said she had eaten dinner and breakfast that morning, um, and was acting like totally fine. And I don't Yeah. Cause that- she had like random yelping too, right? I uh... thought, or maybe, excuse me, she was like hunched back or something. Yeah. There was some weird piece to her. I was like, this home. doesn't make, yeah, that's right. It didn't like make sense because it was so sudden, but there was no clear. Right. Right. Because we did blood work and it was normal. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So it was a weird like, I don't know, episode. Yeah. Because she, like mom was saying, like even at home, she was like hiding in like a blanket basket, like trying to like be hidden from everyone. Was and this she's, a dog? Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And she's like <laughs> super, and she's like, she's a super social dog, like loves yeah. people, loves being out. So for her to be like the exact opposite, yeah. like total personality change on top of the vomiting and not eating and yeah. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And the benefit, like of seeing the same patient multiple times is like even in the room i was like this is not annie like yeah. this is not the normal annie we see every year and so it there's um i mean i didn't i still have, don't know what exactly happened but at yeah. least we that's kind of what prompted our diagnostics of saying hey we should really check something before right she right. leaves yeah. so yeah cuz i feel like i've met her before and she's normally like a very bubbly personality dog mm-hmm. like is happy to see you greets you when you walk in and when i walked in there she was like under the bench yeah so mm-hmm. yeah that's always sad yeah. yeah one of those where you just um i guess the way the best way to explain it is treatment is is um i don't want to say diagnostic what do we say <laughs> treatment is telling or whatever so yeah. like if you kind of like i don't know exactly why this is happening but we're going to try a couple things that would fit with her signs and then they respond well you Mm -hmm. may not have like a okay this is what caused it but it's actually very helpful right and knowing what what helped and um you know you're kind of guessing in a way but you're making an educated guess so 
I'm glad she's feeling better. Mm -hmm. That's good. I was glad to hear that. Yeah. And that's why I was like, I have to text the call. I don't know. Yep. That's good stuff. Well, I also have one of the cases that you started. I did go with Brutus. Oh, nice. Um, Yeah. Um. (laughs) <laughs> so, get i didn't know if we can say the name or not oh <laughs> yes you can okay you like looked at my like, like, name yes don't worry um so virtually duckwall saw him um came in for acute limping um and virtually it was his left i believe it um, was his left yes um super swollen um all the way from the shoulder to the digits, pitting edema. Oh, wow. um, we took Sorry. x-rays, and there wasn't any bony involvement. Um, had, a, like, a 106 uh, fever. Oh, was it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. That's and he scary. was just like, yeah, it was yeah. very strange. What's had, normal for all the listeners? It was, like, like 100 to 101, 102 is, like, yeah. on the high end. Um, yeah. But... Um, so 106 is very, very bad. <laughs> very bad. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and had like no platelets. Um, Jesus. so they transferred him to ER and they did a tick borne disease test and then came back negative. So virtually they sent home antibiotics and, um, an anti-inflammatory, um, no improvement in the next couple of days and then came back and saw Dr. Jones, um, still had like no platelets, um, and still had like a 105 fever, like he started vomiting. Um, so super weird and we couldn't find like any like puncture mark to show, um, like a injury or anything like that. Um, so they decided to just, uh, start a high dose of prednisone, which is a steroid, um, and discontinue the NSAID. And like two days later, he the swelling decreased like ten times. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, what the heck? And the platelets just magically came back. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, so, Never yeah. figured out. So I think um, where it was left off is we did end up submitting the more advanced, like detailed and that tick came panel. Back negative. Did it? Okay, I didn't check that. Okay. Yeah. So that's um, but there good, was but... I did see in Dr. Jones' note um, there was a small draining track, um, yeah. so we added in an extra antibiotic. But hmm. yeah, yeah, huh. it's so interesting because I think originally when I saw him too on the list of things is like systemic disease like tick-borne, but then you worry about more local disease like cellulitis. Did he get bit by something? Yeah. Was there foreign material somewhere? Yeah. Um, but the platelets was what was weird and was scary. Super weird. Yeah, yeah, because it was virtually like no. No, yeah. <laughs> well, with that fever too, because at that point yeah. you're worried about organ failure, you're worried about seizures, yeah. which is why it was transferred. And um, the, and I honestly haven't recapped with Jones, but the thought behind the steroid is that his body is attacking the platelets and destroying them. That's an immune mediated process, yeah. and so the steroid was used to literally dampen and stop that immune. Yeah, the immune system yeah, from yeah. killing them. So, and it worked. Jeez. But you so. have to cover your bases because if it's a tick, sorry, if it's like an infectious disease and you give the immune system something to stop working, then you we'll could be in trouble. Yeah. yeah. So, very so. weird case. It was, yeah, super strange. And yeah. It was just like happy, healthy. Yeah. Uh, doing you looked good. good. And so. it's good that it's draining because yeah. obviously something may be yeah. the secondary or there to start and yeah. wow. it finds its way out. Yeah. He was wow. so interesting. Oh, it was cool. very cool. Yeah. yeah, he's feeling better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a good boy. Yeah. yeah, and it was so random, and so you just never know. Super cute. Yeah, mm-hmm. Phyllis. <laughs> she's hiding by the chair. She's like, I want to be involved. I want to be by my. Okay, mom. so I guess my case was um, a dog. Uh, she was a little older. I don't remember exactly. Twelve to ten to twelve, but came in for just acting lethargic, some diarrhea. Um, we had actually gotten a heads up that she wasn't feeling well a couple of weeks prior, but then they um, ended up going to an ER facility after hours and she had seemed to respond and do better. So then it started happening again and she presented for um, vomiting, diarrhea, just lethargy and everything. She did not have a fever. So on presentation, her exam overall was pretty boring. Like she was comfortable on palpation. No, like I said, no fever or anything. But what was super interesting is that Her heart rate for how she was feeling and everything was like just off. It was super, super fast. Like 
One of those was as soon as I put my stethoscope on, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to count really, really fast. And that's not for a dog her size and everything, how she looked, it didn't make sense. Um, so proceeded with doing blood work, which was boring overall. Um, and so what just kept kind of coming back and I definitely, I talked to Dr. King, I think, or just kind of talked to my colleagues. I'm like, okay, so what's the most beneficial testing? You know, that's the benefit of working with multiple people of like, where do I want to go with this? Cause we still had no idea. So ended up just actually putting a ultrasound probe on her heart because it just didn't, again, it was beating so fast. So unfortunately found a lot of fluid around her heart. And so what can happen is either on exam, you may not hear the heartbeat very well. It's very muffled. Or what happens too, is that, um, if fluid is compressing around the hearts and the muscle, the heart, it has to work that much faster to work against it, to pump out blood. And that's what was happening to her. And so when you see fluid around her heart or around a dog's heart, it's usually never good. Um, one common disease process that can cause that is actually called hemangiosarcoma, which is uh, a malignant cancer of the spleen. It also can be present in the heart as well. And so what I did is I essentially moved the ultrasound probe over to her belly and looked at the spleen and there was a mass there. Mm-hmm. So you can, if it's just the spleen involved only, surgically remove the spleen yeah. and the dog, a dog can live without it. But at that point, you're already... The damage has been done where a mass could have started in the heart and it just got to that point. So um, she was humanely euthanized just because in those scenarios, they could unfortunately very acutely pass away and it could be at home, you know. So um, talk to the owners through that situation and we ended up giving her a peaceful passing, which was a good ending, but definitely a case where all tools are really important. I think that really taking away from like exam is very important because blood work didn't show anything. You know, we didn't do yeah. x-rays, but if we did them, maybe we would have seen something. But um, sometimes I think we get a lot of questions of, do I need an exam? Is yeah. it really important? Mm-hmm. And it, it really, really can be, it can yeah. be life changing. So <laughs> for the animal. So yeah. Wow. Well, that's sad. Yeah. But good case. Yeah. It was a good case. It was very interesting where it came together. So yeah. mm-hmm. Okay, very interesting. Well, learn something. <laughs> wow. Okay, so client question. This is what the podcast is for. Here we go. <laughs> Down to the nitty gritty. Yes, right. So everyone has, or I don't know if everyone's seen the picture. Um, this is uh, it's our German Shepherd's nose is always torn up at the end from at the end from the smaller dogs jumping up and terrorizing him. They want his attention and keep scratching at him. How can we heal him? Some days it is blood dripping. Sad nose shepherd, and he is so sweet. From Tammy. I think it's Hilficker. Hilficker. Thank you. Like, like I'm not on a roll, so <laughs> I want to help. <laughs> Did you see the picture? Yes. Okay. That looks like somebody just took a bite out of his nose. I know. Mm. I know. What are your guys' thoughts initially looking at that? Like, from cases you've helped with, too. Like, what do you think? He seems like a really good boy. For like, <laughs> putting so up sad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's a there's like a little uh, it's like a ointment you can put on their nose, correct, to mm-hmm. um, help soothe, especially for like dry noses, like bulldogs and mm-hmm. um, breaks phallic breeds. Yeah. Um, that could help, but it would be hard to without seeing it in person if that would be able because it looks like there's kind of some blood there so yeah right. it looks like i mean the picture could be a weird angle but it looks like it's kind of deep honestly yeah. is what yeah. i thought it kind of does yeah right well my thing is like how do you keep the smaller dogs off of him long mm-hmm. enough for it to heal, heal. Mm-hmm. yeah because if it's something just as simple like i'm sure they all love each other and it's this isn't something they're intentionally doing to like hurt him right. but yeah. like keeping them I, i'm sure separate. it would break all of their hearts to like keep them separate long enough i mean i'm sure yeah. this would take a couple of weeks to keep fully mm-hmm. yeah. yeah absolutely i had at first thought like a basket muzzle but yeah. i mean it's not yeah. fair to him right 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 but that would you know he'd still be able to breathe and pant and all that and they couldn't 
get after reach it, and it stuff. But yeah. Then I, you know, sorry. Yeah, because I thought about that too, but then that was my thought process too. It's, yeah, because yeah. it's not him, you know, like sticking his nose into stuff and doing that. It's the other dogs. Right. And, yeah. Right. Or like, I mean, along that same line, though, is like, okay, it's injured. Is he now bothered by it and going after it and rubbing and it? You know, it worse. yeah, mm-hmm. the secondary effects. Yeah, I mean, I think Sam brings up a good point: is okay if it if it's continuously happening, right. happening, there has to be some behavior or environmental change there mm-hmm. to allow proper healing. But yeah. then, I mean, to avoid it in the future for sure. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and they have the soft paws for cats. Do so they have them for dogs? They have like little booties. I mean, yeah. Is that what I mean? Yeah. 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 I yeah. don't know. Yeah, like the outdoor, yeah, for like pavement and yeah. things like that. I mean, that would be, <laughs> I yeah. don't know that the other dogs would really like that either. But right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's like, how often is it happening or is it just kind of a one off? And-, and are they purely just like puppies or are they like right. adult dogs? Is it a behavior issue or is it just juvenile behavior? Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that can be taught or at least grow out of grow out or something. Of, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, seeing that, I do think it's it looks deeper. But my other yeah. thought is, like, I feel like that would have to be a pretty aggressive play or there's already some some issue potentially going on with the nose skin. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it was dried out like Nicole mentioned. And, yeah, the yeah, usually just, I just tell people you put Vaseline or Aquaphor on it. And if the dog looks it, it's not a big deal. Right. But that helps with... The dryness, not yeah. necessarily like a wound there. Yeah. So you do worry about like secondary bacterial infection or my first thought was, okay, why why is it ripping that easily? Or is it just because it's just happened a couple times? Right. You know, yeah. um, I can't really, it's hard to see the rest of the nose, but there are things that you look for in trying to identify potential diseases that can occur on the nose. And especially it's a German Shepherd and that's the first thing I read. I was like, German Shepherds, unfortunately, fortunately, I, however you look at it, they, they're they great dogs, but they come with a lot of genetic <laughs> issues yeah. and diseases that they can get. Um, so that's another thing where, okay, you have to take breed into account. Right. Yeah. You know, it kind of puts him in a certain category by him being a German Shepherd, but it doesn't mean he has anything. You just right. have to. Right. It makes the list a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the biggest thing is to Sam's point is, for healing, you got to keep the other dogs away so, from it. Right. For at least a little bit. Yeah. Because right. I was like, but then, like, even if he wore a cone, would it still keep them? Like, it might keep him from bothering it mm-hmm. if it's yeah. bothering him, but would it keep the little dogs out? Jump, jumping. Right. Yeah. Potentially, I guess, if they're like, what if, is that thing? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or if he's able to just lift his head and they're like, boop, boop. Right. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> And maybe they need their nails trimmed, yeah. like mm-hmm. drummled. Old. Yeah, maybe if you know if they're a little pointy, that could be causing more damage. Too. Right. Yeah. I think definitely the the main the first goal is get that healed. Mm-hmm. So yeah. how do we do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's either by keeping it moist, keeping the animals away from it, or sometimes I mean, with how deep it looks, you worry about secondary bacterial yeah. infections. Yep. Exactly. That'd be the first goal. Mm-hmm. And then the second Secondary. goal is how do how do we prevent it? Right. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing that I would say is if it doesn't heal as expected, so we apply the topical meds, we give the right treatment, and it's still happening so easily or it's not healing appropriately, then we have to start having discussions of, okay, is there something else deeper going on? And this this playtime just kind of brought it to the surface right. yeah. in a right. unintentional way. would you ever culture something like that a good question i would if it didn't respond to the first empirical treatment so if we were to give this dog an antibiotic and he's never had it for that issue before then i would say you don't necessarily need to but if we were if you were to have the same issue we have already done antibiotics and it's oozy it smells there's pus infection then absolutely 100 percent yeah you know, does he have any other issues like the rest of his body? Right. Does he have any, you know, wounds that aren't healing or anything that's... Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's that true could be too. something completely different. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's a really good point because some of the disease processes is immune mediated. And sometimes you, like literally there's a whole, um, on VIN, which is our resource, there's literally a whole chart of if this lesion is here and here, it can help you 
literally in like a um, diagram kind of narrow down p- potential causes. Wow. <clears throat> so if it's like around the the eyes and on the nose, that's a different set of lists than just the nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. So that's a really good point. You have to look at the whole picture. It just popped into my head because we've seen two shepherds recently that have had, I mean, horrible skin issues. Obviously not like yeah. this, but anytime I see skin and shepherd, it just makes me think other things could be going on. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's so basically to sum it up, there's a whole list of questions we have to have answered, and um, you know, it may just be that it's got a b- really bad scratch and it's just not that, healed yeah, appropriately. Right, and right. the whole thing goal is just okay, just Separate let it heal them. completely, and then yeah. try to watch it in the future. But um, yeah, I would say have him seen by yeah. one of the doctors <laughs> here, All Star first, yes. <laughs> so then we can create a treatment plan and see what would work best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Good job, us. Wow, <laughs> we did it. I think we got all the question parts of that too. So, I think so. Do you want to do the outro? Ooh. You got this, Ooh, girl. Sure, <laughs> you can do it, face. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable. Remember, send in those questions and be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at All Star Veterinary Clinic. If you enjoyed this episode or a previous episode, leave us a review on our podcast provider of choice. Um, And we'll see you in a few weeks on the next episode of the Veterinary Roundtable. Woo! Woo! Well done. Good job, ladies. (laughs) Thanks for visiting. I was channeling my inner EK. Nice. That's good. <laughs> I really I really saw it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was there. Yeah. It was there. <laughs>